All right. So we're going to tie a fly, as I say, the fly that started it all, uh, the SNM. The SNM was really the, the first fly that uh, got, I guess, got on the market that actually sold a mine that kind of made me a well known fly tire in my own little mind or world. Um, it's a real simple fly to tie. It was a fly I came up with when I was guiding with Lonnie Bowles, um, who now works at the fly shop in Reading, but at the time we were guiding together, or I was guiding for him. And uh, the hot mayfly at the time, and, and still is a great pattern, was uh, Mike Mercer's uh, Micro May. You know, the problem with Mike's fly is, um, at the time, the patterns you would buy in the bin were very inconsistent. Some were nicely tied, nice and trim. Others were hideously overdressed. The tails would break. All sorts of issues we were having with them. And yeah, I, I tied my own for a while, but the problem is they're hard to tie. They take time. And, you know, when you're guiding every day and spending every day on the water, you don't have time to come home and tie the dozen micro maze that uh, people are going to stick in rocks the next day or stuck in rocks that day. So I was like, I got to come up with something simple and easy and that I can just crank out. So I started messing with um, a lot of different ideas, but kind of landed on this one and it took off. So basically the theory behind this fly is like a lot of mayflies, the the naturals are way thinner than anything that you find in a commercially tied fly. Um, even the, the trimmest, most cleanest tied pheasant tails in the fly bin at the fly shop are usually pretty overdressed. And it, it's no knock on commercial fly tying. It's really it, just a disconnect with most fly fishermen as to what a fly looks like in the wild or under the rocks in the river and what an actual fly pattern should look like to imitate that. So when I started looking at the the mayflies on the lower sack, mayfly nymphs on the lower sack and the Yuba River, I realized, you know, they're not much thinner or not much thicker than an actual hook shank. So how do I minimize the amount of material that I put on that hook shank and create a mayfly? Well, the natural solution was, well, I just use thread. So Kind of I built my the pattern and a lot of my early mayfly nymphs, whether it's the micro or uh, the uh, s and m nymph, the military may, a lot of this stuff, the redheaded stepchild, a lot of this of just trying to minimize the amount of material I use on a hook shank. So a lot of that comes with start my thread. And for this one, I'm going to tie the olive. I use the olive done a dot. And a lot of this minimization comes from minimizing the amounts of passes that you make up and down the hook shank. Because every time you make a pass down or up the hook shank, you're adding to the bulk of that pattern. So thinking through that and kind of going, okay, how can I be the most efficient as I go up and down? And at the same time, creating a good profile really got me thinking about how I lay out my materials. And so my goal was to make two passes, one, two. So first thing I do, I take three pheasant tail fibers and I lay them right on top of the hook shank, kind of space them out. Okay. And then as I'm doing this, I lay my thread wraps right next to each other. Just like that, okay? Now, this does a couple different things. One, it does create some taper, just based on the natural taper of those fibers, but at the same time, it creates uniform, uniformity by stacking those fibers right next to each other, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a piece of Let's see. You can use a lot of different types of wire. I use extra small 
and small uh, ultra wire. But again, one thing you can do is vary anything from extra small to small to brassy. Okay, and I'll show you what you how I do this. I lay the wire right next to the hook shank. Okay. And wrap forward. Just like that. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure the most commercially tied ones you find use small. Uh, one thing you can do is as that wire sits next to that hook shank, if you're looking at the top of the fly, that increases the width of that fly. Okay. That's huge, especially at scale. Okay. These are small bugs. So a swimmer or a betis, a PMD, a smaller, thinner mayfly, I tend to use extra small wire to keep it as trim as possible. Okay. I start tying some more small clinger styles. I may bulk it up even to a brassy to get that wide kind of bodybuilder look that those nymphs actually have. And it's a subtle change, but it creates a versatile pattern where you can just by changing the size of the wire, change the profile of that nymph. For this one though, I'm going to use this extra small and I just wrap it. I got this. I mean, this is basically, let's not kid ourselves. This is basically a thread midge type of uh, tie. Okay. Now I always match the wire to the thread color. Okay. Every once in a while I'll use a darker wire but very rarely will I use a lighter wire. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in the wing case. And again, like I said, this is not a complicated fly on purpose. Uh, I'm going to take a goose by it. I use the, for 99.9%, .9%, I use the Prince Nymph Brown color goose by it. Okay. And the idea of a goose by it, and one thing that I did do on this pattern, one thought most nymphs, especially mayfly nymphs, are darker on top than they are on bottom. Okay, So having a dark wing case and a little bit different or lighter undercarriage is, I think, important. And one thing with these goose bites that I do is if you look at the goose bites, there's two sides. There's what I call the cupped side with the ridges and the kind of arched side. For the s and I want that cupped side facing up when I tie it in. Okay. Because when I pull that wing case over, it's going to have that encased side come over. Now, if you watch the video on the little Amigo, you'll see I do it a little different with that flying. You know, you can mix up and mix and match however you want. Dubbing, I just use some Antron Olive. With this, I keep it as thin as possible. I've never really found that there is a two trim when it comes to these kind of little olive mayflies. Okay. And I'll even go in. This is not a fly that you want buggy. Trim it down. Okay. And I'll take one piece of olive midge flash, fold it over. Do a little pin down wrap for legs. Pull the wing case over. side's got one. It's all right. There you go. That's the S&M.